Following a record-breaking Arctic blast where we had temperatures as low as negative 20 and a whole lot of snow, we are now in a bit of a thaw. So we have a slushy, icy mess on our hands. So we are not going to be tackling any outdoor projects this week. However, we have an indoor slash outdoor project that we've been waiting to do. And so we're really excited to finally get that done. It's a full tear out, Mama. You ready? <laughs> no. You already shut the laundry room door? Yeah, let's try to keep all the warm air inside, cold air out, huh? Okay, hey guys, don't open this door. You gonna stay on the inside? Yeah. It shouldn't be that bad. All this trim should be nailed into the framing, so I think we just pull back the weather stripping, unsecure the door, should slide out. And then with the new install, we'll have to work from the inside coming back out too. Melissa and I are both really excited to be replacing this side door here in our house for a number of reasons. One of those big reasons though is the fact that it is actually on the north side of our house, which means that the entire fall and winter season it is stuck here in what is a very snowy and moist environment. It's shaded, so a lot of moisture. Also, we just don't really like the way that it looks. So we thought that having a light colored door with a light colored soffits would be a thing and that it would look nice. But as many of you pointed out when we installed the door, which we already knew because we saw it too, it completely clashed. It looked really bad. So we've been wanting to replace it with something a little bit more suitable. Yeah, it stands out. We have black trim. We have this really dark siding. This light colored door just doesn't work. So we're gonna get this one torn out. We're gonna set it aside, maybe for a later project and replace it with the new door that we purchased yesterday. Okay, you're gonna hate this, but I just thought of something else. What? None of this hardware or these handles match anything else in the house and it's going to clash with the door, so it needs to be black. I already thought about that. Why don't we plan for this kind of stuff ahead of time? I, well, when did you think about it? <laughs> no, you know why? It's because this door went in, what, a year ago? Yeah. Over a year ago now before we had the doors and we knew what hardware we were going with, so we bought something generic. I love not having what we need on the day of the project. That's kind of how things go around. Alright, start the pivot. Start. Hey, what? <laughs> you have a turn, but. I don't want to get a grab. It turns! Be careful. Be careful. The drywall. I'll try it well. You're just itching to re drywall this room. I'm good. I don't mean to point out the obvious, but you have made a real mess. It's gonna happen, let's tell you. <laughs> Looks like you used, like, you just exploded the door out. <laughs> it is so strange having this door sitting here again. It just instantly brought back this big flood of memories. This was the last step. The very last thing that we put in before we were officially dried in. So we had this big gaping hole in the side of the house and it was just this last little thing that we needed to do. And having this door sitting here, all the raw wood from the inside and everything. It just reminds me of that day, which was a very exciting day. But now we're ripping it out, which is so weird. Like, it seems kind of sad. It's a big hole again. Let's get the new door. It seems sad to rip out the old door. So the new door is black inside and out. We went with a fiberglass door because again, it's on the north side of the house and it is not covered. It's completely exposed to all the elements. So this way we're not worrying about warping and shrinking and leaking and all that stuff. So this will be a lot more secure. Plus we went with a much bigger window to allow some more extra light, some natural light into the laundry room, which is really nice. So I think it's gonna look good. Having the black door in the interior is going to be the only black door inside. And I think it's just gonna add a little intrigue for the mudroom, something different. That sounds good. We got the new door moved inside. We're gonna slide it over, set it in place, and we'll start shimming things up. Mama, let's go. You wanna stay out here? I'll, or inside, I'll step out. Yep. And get things set in place. All right. Works for me. What do you think? How's this gonna go? Uh, well, with our history of doors, <laughs> it'll definitely be mid midnight. So unless you're new to the channel, you know that we've had quite the experience with installing all of our doors. Never seems to go perfectly the first time. We end up having to make a number of adjustments and by a number of adjustments, I mean, we usually go back and do this like three, four, or even five times. So <laughs> I'm hopeful that with this door, given all the experience we've had over the past 
two and a half, almost three years now that we'll get this one plumb straight, not rubbing from the first time. I am sneaking away from my athletic greens break. I notice at mid morning, my energy levels really start to tank. So about a year ago, I started using athletic greens because I was looking for an alternative to my everyday multivitamin. So this year I am turning 40. 53. 40. 53. Stop it. I am turning 40 this year. And so I'm really focused on my health and I'm noticing that my energy and my recovery just aren't what they used to be. So I tried taking all of these vitamins, but unfortunately they were really hurting my stomach. So I wasn't able to take them. When I found Athletic Greens, not only does it not hurt my stomach, but it actually supports my digestive health and my gut health. With Athletic Greens, I am getting 75 vitamins, minerals, superfoods, and probiotics in one very delicious and convenient daily serving. The special blend of ingredients helps support not only my gut health, but immunity, energy, recovery, focus, even aging. The other thing that I absolutely love about Athletic Greens is it is a daily routine that is super easy to follow. It is just one scoop or one travel pack, eight ounces of water, and you are good to go. Athletic Greens is also very transparent. Everything is listed right on the label, which is really helpful if you have anyone in your family with dietary restrictions. So to take the first steps towards improving your daily energy and your overall health, just click the link down in the description box below and you will get a year's worth of D3K2 plus five free travel packs with your first purchase. This is an absolute game changer for your immune system. Athletic Greens provides your body with everything that it needs for optimal performance every single day. So remember, Athletic Greens is going to give our community an immune supporting free one year supply of vitamin D plus five free travel packs with your first purchase. So I got everything shimmed up and secured to the rough opening. Door is opening and shutting without any issues. On the first go around, look at that high five, fist bump. That was a fist bump. Same, same. Anyway, it is now 3.30 in the afternoon, which here during winter time in North Idaho means that it's now night night time. No, it's not night night time. It's Basically, just dark. <laughs> it's very dark outside. You're not so going to bed. <laughs> I think the last thing that we're going to get done for today is. You're like a dog. I'm gonna, <laughs> it's dark. I'll go sleep. I'm going to grab the doorknob, the deadbolt from the old door. We're going to transfer that over, even though that's probably not what we're going to end up going with ultimately. Yeah, we're going to need to swap it out with black. So we'll take care of that real quick. I'm going to squirt some uh, spray foam around between the door and the rough opening to make sure we don't have any cold air that's leaking in. Once that is all hardened up tomorrow, We'll get our door trim Yay. set up and uh, this whole door will be wrapped up. Look the that. whole room will be done. Woo. Spray foam is in around our entire door opening and that's doing a great job of keeping all the cold air out, warm air in. Unfortunately, however, you see we still have a hole here where the doorknob belongs. In the process of trying to get this deadbolt and the doorknob switched out, we encountered some kind of an unknown issue with the doorknob. I'm not sure what's wrong, but since we're swapping it out anyway, we're just going to leave it out for the time being fill that hole with this red. Looks good. Very classy. Looks good. While our dinner starts, I have a weekly ritual that we get asked about a lot, so I'm gonna show you guys really quickly how we do it. Every week we make two gallons of kombucha, which means we end up with six quarts that we can drink, and then we save two quarts to start our next two gallons. So I'm going to quickly bottle up the kombucha that we have brewed, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to make a brand new batch of kombucha. It is so much better than what's at the store, and it's way healthier because it's not pasteurized, and so you get all of the good stuff. And then the bottom quarter, we're going to save as our starter tea and we're also going to save our scoby. So we're just gonna dump that into a bowl and set it aside. So now we are ready to start our new batch. If you are interested in brewing kombucha, you can ask anybody that brews it to give you a starter and some scoby, and then you can do your own batch. Now, if you cannot find anyone that brews kombucha, all you need to do is go to the health food store or the refrigerated section of your grocery store and get one bottle of unpasteurized kombucha, and you're going to use that in the exact same way that I'm going to use the starter tea. For kombucha, all you need is some boiling water, and you need your starter, whether it's bottled or one that you get from a friend. Now don't put your starter in until this is completely cool. So just set that off to the side. So you're going to fill this about halfway with boiling water. You're going to add six black tea bags. You can use organic or whatever you want. You can also use green tea if you want, but if you're gonna use green tea, just know that it's gonna be really, really mild. I prefer black tea. And then you're going to add one cup of sugar to your boiling water. 
Don't worry about it being a lot of sugar because this is fermented. And so through the fermentation process, most if not all of your sugar gets eaten up. It just depends on how long you ferment it. So we're gonna let that go in there and we're gonna let it dissolve and then cool to room temp. All right, so now that our kombucha is just barely warm, we are ready for the final step. You're going to take your tea bags out. And now you are ready to add in your starch. And then you're going to add one scoby to each one. And then I'm just gonna top them with just clean water. Then you just cover them with something breathable. It can be a coffee filter or a tea cloth. I use these because I think they're cute and it sits in my kitchen. And then you just wait seven to 10 days and you repeat the process. It's just an ongoing brew and it's very, very easy to do. Ooh, the lighting's really dark. You're fine. Okay, you guys have to excuse my puffy eyes and my really red skin. I have an allergic reaction to something. <laughs> like I ate something yesterday and then my whole face turned red. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. So today we are going to have a pretty quick work day because all we have to do is trim out this door, do some baseboards, and then we are done. So we still need the handle. I do have some plans for Jeremy this afternoon, but seriously, my face is on fire right now. Some Benadryl. <laughs> The ground with the black looks sharp. I know, I was just gonna say that, it looks really good. Yeah. It goes together really well. It looks so much nicer than all the light wood door. Yeah, I like the window walls too. Foam. It looks good though. Yeah. I really like the black up against the trim. Yeah, it does look good. See the door lever handle okay, in handle. there. It's good to go. A couple pieces of base. We're done. Let's wrap it up. Jeremy went on a hunt for one last piece of baseboard. We have a bunch of stuff that got left over from when we were doing the original base. And so we just have this tiny little piece to do and we are done for the day. So you guys may be wondering, why does Melissa still have her Christmas decor up? And that is because I have been resisting taking it down because I'm afraid that when I take down all of our holiday decor, our home will be completely stark and empty looking. We moved in right before Halloween. And so I instantly put up all my fall decor and then my Thanksgiving and then my Christmas. And so the house has looked nice and decorated and full. However, when I take down the holiday decor, we don't have any decor. So this has been an ongoing problem. Did you find some base? I got some. All right, he found some base. So we're gonna get back to work and then I really wanna start tackling some of that so that we actually feel like we live here. There it is, donezo. Looks good. Does look good. Happy with it. It's nice to have everything finished off. Well, except for the hole in the wall. Except for the hole. <laughs> we'll get that plugged and we'll worry about that little hole. Time to go shopping. Yes, let's, let's do take it. care of that.
You feel jealous? She took my coat. You feel <laughs> She has got my coat. Hers is far more groomed than yours. <laughs> it's like a minky. Bedroom. Yeah, it worked. Right next to my coat. We have come to Sandpoint to check out a bunch of different stores that have all kinds of unique art. We don't want to. Jeremy found a tree. I have a tree. So apparently we're buying that. So so far we haven't really found any art that it completely jumps out at us. Well, we I did, found one. We did find one picture that we really like. So we need to keep looking. We have so much wall space. That's and a talk when he's come home with us. Uh, yeah, I think Jeremy found a Tatanka painting. It's beautiful. I'm pretty sure that's going in our bedroom. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so uh, we need something for the living room, though. I really, really want to find a piece of art for where our computer desk is, and I'm having a hard time finding something big enough, but not too big. Hey, what do you think about this mirror? <gasps> that's cool. Yeah, what if we did, like, a mirror? Oh, good, that's not attached. What if we did a mirror instead of art above where the editing station is. Not like a lot. That's why I pointed it out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want dinner tonight? <laughs> Jeremy wants to go home. Okay, you want to get the mirror and the Tatanka? Seriously, I think it look well. Yeah. Or look good. Well, good. It'll In this case, good. <laughs> okay, sold. Would it just be possible to yes. get that uh, buffalo? The buffalo? The yeah. drawing down. And then we're going to take that mirror there as well, which I can grab, but there was stuff on it. Stuff in the way, so. The mirror? Yeah, one? yes. Okay. Happy, Jeremy. That's what you want. What's going in our bedroom? Let's see. <laughs> it's right next to your coat. The Tonka. Thank you. Happy New Year. We didn't find something for every single spot on the list, but we were able to knock off two big areas, and so we're very excited about that. And we will end up filling everything in time as we find the right stuff. But for now, it is New Year's Eve, so we're gonna grab the black handle that we need to finish off that door, and we are going to get home because we've got some plans with the kids. This cool rustic mirror. That's a mirror. What do you think? Ooh, I like that. Nice, yeah? Nice and herky. It's chunky. chunky. You know how we like chunky. Mm. All right, who's ready to stay up late? Me. Me. You gonna make it to midnight, Eli? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> what about you, Kira? Yeah. Midnight New York time or midnight our time? <laughs> so steaks, I'm going to slap those on the grill and then we'll do fireworks after that, okay? okay. Yeah, dress warm. No, you were not. Fireworks! Yeah. Let's do it! Nothing will make a person reflect more than the passing of another year. For a moment, we're reminded of just how fleeting time really is. How our children and our aging loved ones, how we are yet another year older. We think about all the plans that we've had, not just for the passing year, but throughout our entire lifetime. And we remember all the dreams fulfilled and the opportunities that we let slip through our hands, the broken promises that we've made to ourselves, and all the highlights of the past. 
Some years we are happy to see go, and others are difficult to turn the page on. This year in particular just feels different. I used to spend New Year's Eve looking forward and making these big plans for everything that lie ahead. But lately I realize that I'm spending more and more time looking back. I'm reflecting on simpler days, days that were filled with sticky fingers and diapers and clipping coupons, scraping and saving to maybe, just maybe, be able to move out to Idaho and buy a farm with horses on it and build our own home together. And then suddenly, in what feels like the blink of an eye, we're here. And in a funny way, I find myself feeling a bit lost. All of those grand plans that we held for all of those years are finished. But our story doesn't end here. Even if today, I'm not totally sure what that even means. But the beauty of every new year is that no matter what we've done or even what we haven't done yet, we're reminded that we now have a whole new start.